I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ukraine to introduce the statement by his head of state. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm honored to introduce a pre-recorded statement by His Excellency Mr. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. Ukraine joins the debate uh, we have carefully listened to on Tuesday and today, the debate that has reassured us again that the question my President put on Monday addressing this assembly, are we really incapable of stopping aggressions and wars, is more than urgent. 75 years ago in San Francisco, a representative of Ukraine said that Ukrainian people who have made great sacrifices in this war are vitally interested that their efforts and the efforts of all other people be crowned with lasting peace and lead to creation of conditions which will prevent new trials of war. Prompted by this desire, Ukraine joined this organization as its founding member 75 years ago. Now I invite you to listen to the address of the President of Ukraine in which he rightfully stresses that this session will come down in history as an example of returning to active multilateralism and efficient international solidarity, a session which did not only recall the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, but started to permanently and unwaveringly follow them. I thank you, Mr. President. Dear Mr. President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Ukraine, I have the honor to congratulate you, Mr. Boskir, on your election as President of the 75th UN General Assembly session. You happen to steer the Assembly in hard times when even traditional international instruments and formats may not work. That's why I want to assure that Ukraine has been and will continue to be for you and the United Nations a reliable partner, even despite the fact we are separated by thousands of kilometers. A year ago, in New York, we discussed threats to the international future, we devised plans, we made forecasts, but could anyone at least imagine that 2020 would stage such a crush test for the planet? The countries locked down their borders, the Summer Olympic Games postponed, and the session of the General Assembly of the United Nations is taking place online. A year ago, we would say this is the script for the apocalyptical blockbuster, not realities of 2020. In such uneasy times for the world, it is good to remember the sentiments of the leaders of the founding countries of the United Nations 75 years ago. The humanity just survived the most horrendous war. The world resembled a soldier that was trolling across blood-drenched field one minute after the explosion stopped, emaciated, hollowed, at a loss, but alive. The Second World War became a global earthquake that claimed tens of millions of lives, but humanity could recover. And on October 24, 1945, at the conference in San Francisco, the UN found the nations, including Ukraine, put aside all the contradictions and differences and got united to build a better world together. Undoubtedly, during these 75 years, many achievements were made in terms of economic development, poverty reduction, minimization of wars and cataclysm that could have happened without the United Nations. The humanity explored this space and even can hold UN sessions remotely with the assistance of modern technologies. Speaking the language of these technologies, the UN has become software that saved the world, the critical errors. At the same time, we have to acknowledge that the system is getting glitched too often. It is attacked by new bugs, viruses, and their containment is not always efficient. I am saying it as the head of state in which, in 21st century, the Russian Federation annexed the Crimean Peninsula, the country which has been contained in its military aggression in Donbass. What sentiments would the founders of the United Nations have 
Had they known that 75 years later in the center of Europe there would be war, that in Crimea human rights are flagrantly violated, that persecutions of Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars are taking place, that militarization of the peninsula is building, and sea areas around it that violates and breaches security balance of the Black Sea region. Would they change something in the UN Charter and mechanism of the United Nations had they known that as a result of 75 years after, as a result of the war in Donbass, would claim 14,000 lives and one million and a half of people would lose their homes? Undoubtedly, for the last year, we proved that Ukraine really strives for peace. We managed to unblock the dialogue. We resumed meetings of the nomadic format leaders. We made substantial progress in mutual release of the detained people. And from 27th of July, there is in place a comprehensive ceasefire, which, despite the attempts to disrupt it, gives hopes to achieve sustainable peace. And it is urgently needed to keep moving towards real and genuine peace. Next steps on this way should be the withdrawal of unlawful military formations and armaments from the occupied territories, reinstatement of control over the state border, and finally, restoring territorial integrity of Ukraine within the internationally recognized borders. We are grateful to our international partners for the assistance and support on this difficult way, and we hope for the further unity of the international community on the matter, and I'm convinced that restoring sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, coupled with respect to the international role, an important role should be played exactly by the United Nations and to this end we need to improve the existing mechanism. It is unacceptable when sovereignty of the independent country is violated by one of the permanent members of the UN Security Council. It proves finally that mechanism of 1945 today do not work to the full extent. All this can bring about the further depreciation of the Security Council, Ukraine will actively participate in its reformation. This body should become more representative, balanced, transparent and efficient. It is in the interest of the United Nations to have an effective instrument if somebody comes to violate and abuse the right of veto and the status of the permanent member. Besides, I want to invite our friends to join the establishment of the International Crimean Platform for concerted actions to protect the rights of the Crimeans and the occupation of the peninsula. I also call on support of the renewed resolution situation with human rights in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol, Ukraine, that will be submitted to the General Assembly by the end of this year. And the most important, the case of Crimea and Donbass should not become customary element of the international landscape where reports, conferences and protocol statements to the anniversary of occupation would be taken as sufficient form of international reaction. Conversely, until the wound in the center of Europe is bleeding, the pain will be felt the world over. And the only recipe for the efficient treatment is the deoccupation of Crimea and Donbass. I understand that from 2014 in the UN it is repeated annually, but this is the biggest problem. And it is not only about Ukrainian case, but all global threats to the planet, with reports getting longer and longer with every passing year, and the most horrible that calamities have become a normality. The world got accustomed to horrible news, they still shock, but are forgotten quickly when on the global agenda there is a new information bomb exploding. Last year's assembly, I said, there is no more notion as somebody else's wall. Our planet is no more that big. It is proved by 
MH17 case, it is proved by environmental threats problem with access to food and drinking water. It is proved by information threats to the world when disinformation and fake news can influence the world markets, stock exchanges and even electoral processes. Ukraine being one of the countries that from 2014 actively counteracts the propaganda and information attack stands ready to initiate the establishment in Kyiv of the headquarters of the international office to counter against disinformation and propaganda. The fact that our planet is not that big was finally proved by 2020 fires in Australia that stirred the world or down in a Boeing 737 over the territory of Iran, the Ukrainian aircraft was struck down carrying the citizens of Ukraine, Canada, Iran, Afghanistan, Great Britain and Sweden. And of course, COVID-19 pandemic which spread it at a lightning speed. The humanity could not even search for words COVID and Wuhan in Google when coronavirus was knocking on the door of every house. Please pay attention to another thing. Coronavirus spares no one. It is indifferent whether the country has the nuclear weapon or the level of its GDP, whether the country is part of G7 or G20, whether Christianity, Islam, Judaism or other religions are professed in this country does not matter anything for COVID. The COVID-19 showed that global world is not just the world without borders. This is about global responsibility when counteracting joint threats should include not some, not 20, but at least 193 countries. Today, we come to understand that fight against COVID-19 will last longer than one year. It is hardly the last pandemic that we will have to survive. But we will have to emerge from the existing crisis stronger and more prepared. This is the test for all countries. Struggle for limited resources will only exacerbate the problems. We require sincerity in dialogue and active solidarity, but this is where the value of multilateralism lies. We have to overcome the most economic crisis of the last year together. The expected GDP fall or sometimes in double digits. This is not just the statistics interesting for experts. This is the reduction of quality of life of billions of people, looming threats of hunger for millions, uniting efforts of all the countries is an absolute requirement of time. Ukraine cannot stand aside and is ready to make its own contribution in ensuring including the food security for the mankind. Mr. President, Every year, the call for actions instead of talks is getting louder in General Assembly and it testifies to the crisis in the United Nations, the security architecture, the health of humanity, our economies and the world as a whole. The 75th anniversary of UN Foundation should become an impetus for transforming the organization in a more dynamic and efficient body. I really want to start my speech in 2021 by saying that the 75th Assembly will come down the history as example of return to active multilateralism and efficient international solidarity, which not only remembered well the aims and principles of the UN Charter, but started to permanently and unwaveringly observe them which resumed the truth that was the fundamental when the UN was founded. We don't have a reserve planet. We live here and just once. And this is the future that we all want. And this is the UN that we all need. 
I sincerely wish to achieve this to you, Mr. President, and all the stakeholders. I'm convinced that these are 193 UN countries. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I would like to thank the President of Ukraine for the statement he has just given. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Suriname to introduce the statement by his head of state.